Today on Singles Court, Tim says he's a laughing stock since their love life became public. She's uh, calling me uh, or orally inadequate. Lucy claims she's just doing her job, and Tim has no idea where the real story lies. Indulge all these fantasies you have about having sex on a jungle gym. And Tracy's tired of playing chauffeur. I do all the driving, you see, Angela. I'm responsible. I don't, why, why do you I don't have a car. And Adam's backseat driving is making her see red. I was not about she's to hit the tree. tree. Had to eat. Well, of course, why she's going to hit the tree. You came from literally from the back and you grabbed why the steering wheel. What did you expect me to do? Welcome to Singles Court, the prima donna production of the Singles Broadcast Network. I'm your producer, Michael Day, the man who writes the checks and mans the decks. But enough about me. Let's meet our lovely host, relationship mediator, Angela Siegel. Hello, Michael. You do suck up. Oh, I do, I do. You look lovely today. Ooh, is it me or am I suffering from jungle fever? <laughs> okay. Let's get to the case. Now, let's get to it. I'm about to do that. Are you ready? Please meet Tim. He's a junior accountant, and Lucy. Now, Lucy is a sex columnist. Ooh. They met a couple of months ago, and things went well. They hit it off, and it was going great. However, Tim now thinks that Lucy is using their sex life as fodder for her column. I call it the case of the kiss-and-tell columnist, or write what you know. Well... Sounds like you're having some issues here. You're not too happy about this. Yeah, Tell no. me what's the, pro what's the problem? Well, um, as you know, she's a, a sex columnist, and it was a, a column that I used to enjoy reading. It's in one of those, uh, those papers, downtown papers, one of those free papers. Mm -hmm. And uh, got the chance to meet her at a party once. Uh, met her. She was a lot sweeter than I imagined she'd be being a sex columnist. I thought she'd be a little bit more tardy, but anyway, she was really wholesome and this and that. And uh, got to know her. Uh, things were going well. One thing led to another, and uh, we've been dating for a few months now, and uh, you know, the normal ups and downs of a relationship, but uh, for the most part, really good uh, until uh, she started writing about me in her, in her column, basically stuff that goes on behind closed doors and ended up in the, in the column. So are you, well, are you writing about him? Or? No, I think y he's, yes. I think Tim tends to flatter himself, Angela. Let me, let, hold on. Just Either that or he's really paranoid. Listen to you. He, he, he's very paranoid. My column is based on partly personal experience. Mm -hmm. I admit I use maybe some personal, but most for the most part it's answers to the <laughs> questions that readers are asking. It's personal experience. I do the research, I read the books, I ask questions, okay. and I think Tim's just being paranoid. Okay, Tim. Yeah. Is, is, Tell me the issue. Is the issue that you feel that the information is about you and you're not willing to have that information released? Well, do you? She, what? Tell me. Explain that to me. It's He's derogatory information. She's uh, she's uh, calling me uh, or orally inadequate. Uh, she mentioned that. That's a new one. In, in, in the article, is that politically she, uh, correct, Michael? Well, I've never heard that one myself. <laughs> well, <laughs> if you did, you wouldn't see him again anyway. <laughs> um, Tell uh, me, what does, I mean, what does that mean? And this is, you know, pretty clean. Yeah. You know, so explain it. I mean, what does that mean? Is that, is that something that obviously made you not feel very... Oh, you know? not at all. I'm, I'm walking into the office and the guys are pointing out that she called me uh, uh, an all-night one-man band, whatever that means. She's saying these things about me. I'm and, a sex and also mention, oh, hold, hold on. And also mentioning the fact that, uh, that I enjoy spanking sometimes, these kinds of things, which is highly embarrassing when you're, when you're going to work and your uh, co-workers well, are coming oh. in and putting the articles on your desk. Okay, and, uh, well, give, give, give her the opportunity. Now, he's saying that, that you're doing this, you're saying you're not, but why does he think you are? And you're because it's an, he's being egotistical. It has nothing to do with him. But ha, give me the setup of how he would think it was him and it's really not. Are you saying these things about someone that would happen to be walking down In the general, street? In general, I, I, well, we discuss, you know, the odd sexual, <laughs> you know, discussion. But I, it has nothing to do with Tim. Everybody no. knows it's me. Our relationship was not brought into this. And how, how did how everybody know be? what's going on between us? How could us? it not be? This is ridiculous. But, but here, here is the issue. Okay. Did you know what she did for a living? It sounded like you knew and made an effort to meet her, even though you knew she, what she did for a living. That's what it sounds yes. like to me. Yes, of course I knew. Of so course I knew. Did you, do you think that there's some sexual exploit that you're involved in that nobody else is that you wouldn't be able to cover in the column? I mean, don't you think some of the well, things are going to cross over? Well, yeah, maybe, but it just 
feels like me and, and, and all the guys at work are saying it's me and my best buddy Simon. He liked it. what I did when he met me. It was but part of the reason why he Until it was about me. me, and then when it became about me, I didn't like it I mean, anymore. I think that's fair. Who else would you know introduce right. you to tantric sex and <laughs> indulge all these fantasies you have about <laughs> having Ooh. sex on a jungle gym? I mean, so let me get you your, your buddies at work know that you're dating a sex columnist. Yes, yeah. yes, they do. So everybody knows. And they're writing me for and, it too. And you think it's about you, and you're saying it's not. It's not. But you need to help me to understand, and people that have not read your column. Why would he think it was it's him if if it's not? I mean, what makes him think? It's just that? very general you, information. Are you saying, but are you saying last night I? No, I'm not he, using the at all. But you know, it's I'm so obvious. It's like so, it's, sorry. Well, discussing sex in general, it has nothing to do with him. But he's just okay. bringing it back to himself as usual, and okay. really, it's I mean, it's unfair. Tell me what you think would make you feel better as far as you don't believe her. So what can she do to make you believe her? She can, she can stop doing it. She can stop writing about I'm it. I'm not going to write about job. sex, period. Well, I don't know. I mean, all the guys that work, Simon, Simon included, is oh, don't my, up, my Simon. best friend. He's the biggest hypocrite I know. Oh, okay? is that right? If he's such a good friend, why is he calling me and asking me out on a date? Excuse me? Yeah. No, that's this not true. I can't believe you're doing times. this. So either he's just jealous Don't take the responsibility you know, off yourself by talking about Simon. It's Simon. true, Angela. We actually have a cassette tape from your answering Thank machine you. that's been provided for me, and I'll just let you listen to this. Hi, this is Lucy. Leave me a message. Lucy, it's, uh, it's Simon. Please, uh, just let me take you for dinner. Tim, he doesn't know how lucky he is. You need a guy who really appreciates you. Anything he could do, <laughs> I could do better. Call me. There you go. Okay. And so Simon's so your so source? So Simon's my best... So there you go. Was my also. best friend. So I guess something's been going on. Nothing has been going on. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 hold on. No, no, nothing's been going on at all. You're directing your anger at not Simon, at her. Who's your relationship with? With uh, Lucy. Uh, you're, tell me how that makes you feel that you know Simon, your source of your information. The reason you know she's talking about you, the man with all the information. Now you find out that he wants, your, wants the person you're have a, having a relationship with. How does that make you feel? Oh, not, not, not too good. And it uh, doesn't make well, me feel too good either that, that something's been going on behind my back. Nothing has been why going on. Why do you think something's presuming? been going on? Well, why would he call her if, if, uh, if, if she wasn't? Because he's a and he's stupid and you shouldn't have listened to him in the first place. He's my best friend, Lucy. So well, get new friends. Do you, do you understand what's going on here, Lucy? What is it? He, he believes that you all are having a relationship. Are you or are you not having a relationship with I'm Simon? I'm not having a relationship with Simon. So he chooses to believe that... He wants to believe that. Why? Because it's in his own head. I mean, he's making it up and he's stubborn and he I'm won't one, listen to what I'm one. saying. You know what? I think you yeah. should find someone, you know, maybe who teaches grade school or something because this is obviously not working out. Yeah, maybe I should. Tim, think about this. For, you, your information came from somebody who wants your woman. Yeah. You say he's your friend. Yeah. She tells you that that's not what's going on. You refuse to believe her. Please help me to understand why you would put her in a position to defend somebody who's not even being loyal to you. I don't, I don't, I don't know. You don't know? Well, you know what? Think about it. Because you're getting ready to ruin a, a relationship based on uh, the words of someone who's trying to, to talk to your woman. Somebody who's supposed to be my best friend, but... You know, maybe. obviously he's not. <laughs> I'll, be back not. With my, I'll be back with my resolution. I just want to be sure that I understand this correctly. Do you still believe that Simon is your friend? And if you do, do you believe that he's worthy of your friendship? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't think, uh, I think I'll have to talk to him in person, but I don't know if I'll be able to trust him right now or maybe ever. But, uh, I, don't, but I also don't think that he would have been doing that had she not been in some way leading him on mm. to get to that point. There's no way I was leading him on. I think it's time for my resolution. Let me start with you first, Tim. Uh, don't flatter yourself, really. I mean, the idea that you think that you can have a relationship with a sex columnist and not think that there's something that's going to overlap in your own life is pretty silly. I mean, let's think about this. How many different ways are there to do it? There's a lot, but most of them, most people are doing. So there's no big camera in your bedroom showing everybody something new and unique. So. You know, let's be realistic. It's pizza. Some better than others, but it's all good. So you have to understand that at some point you have to believe somebody. 
You know, mm -hmm. you make the decision, if you care enough about them, to at least give them the opportunity to maybe leave a little window open where there'll be some belief. Mm -hmm. Lucy, you have to understand that a person's belief is their reality. You can't make him believe you if he refuses to believe you. No matter what you do, he's going to believe what he wants to believe. Yeah. Relationships are built on belief. And if you can't find a common ground in belief, which then turns into trust, which then turns into reality, you have no relationship. So belief is not some word that's out there. It becomes the very root of a strong relationship. Mm -hmm. So all I can say to you today is I believe if you're going to keep it together, you better get together on what it is you both believe. And that's that in black and white. Next on that's Singles Court, Tracy's tired of playing chauffeur. I'm quite frankly quite fed up of taking him everywhere. And Adam's backseat driving is making her see red. You got no transportation. You take a long time in the shower. She gave you $10 for the cab. I think I'm she's really exaggerating giving you an with Redeem yourself here, please. And Singles Court is back. Well, actually, we never went away. We've been here in the studio at the Singles Broadcast Network with our delicious host, Angela Siegel. What? Delicious? I've tasted you. Oh, gosh. Just Get kidding. on with the case. Okay, this case involves <laughs> Adam, who's a video store clerk, and Tracy, who's a paralegal, which is kind of like being a paratrooper, only with more paperwork. They hit it off a couple of months ago and everything's been going great. However, their little love has hit a traffic jam. Two people, four wheels, one big problem. I call it the case of, you're driving me crazy. Mm, Adam, sounds like you have issues with wheels. What's going on? Well, the other night we were supposed to go to this party together. So I came over to her house to take a shower and get ready. <coughs> I got out the shower and she was gone. And I looked in the kitchen, there was a $10 bill with a number for a taxi cab. Ooh. We were supposed to go to the party together, and she took off and left me. <laughs> we're going to the party together anyway. I don't see why we couldn't just go and spend some quality uh, time together. Can I together, just but... uh, make a slight comment there, sure. Angela? Because um, first... that was cold. I like it, though. That's pretty good. $10 for a cab. I'm liking that. Well, you know, <laughs> I, just, I just figured in the situation that I was not going to wait around an hour and a half for him to get ready. Oh. I didn't see, the I I didn't see the it being necessary it to minutes. wait for him for that length of period of time. I'm quite frankly quite fed up of taking him everywhere. I do all the driving, you see, Angela. I'm you, responsible. I I, why, why do you I don't have a car. I don't have a car. I mean, and this is the she's problem. my girl. We're going to the one. same party anyway. He needs to get one. Ah. This is the problem. So, you don't, he, so he doesn't have any transportation? He doesn't have any transportation. And I drive him all over the place. I'm the main driver. My I own bike the vehicle. got stolen. I used to pedal around. My oh. bike got stolen recently. That's why they have the bus and the subway. Oh, There man, are other means cold. of transportation. I don't really see the problem. I, was like, I work in a video store part-time. I don't make a lot of money. Okay. You, you know, you're giving like a bunch of, of statements that I, I don't know if they're excuses or facts, but you're not building a very good case for yourself. You've got no transportation. You take a long time in the shower. She gave you $10 for the cab. I think I'm she's really exaggerating. Giving you with Redeem yourself here, please. Look, we're going to the party together. I don't see why we couldn't just, I don't see why she has to leave. Well, We're going to the what? same place and she just took off. I mean, I think it's quite rude to leave $10 in a taxi. There's also a little minor detail that's not being mentioned here, okay, Angela. Please. And I think the point of that is the fact that when we drive together, which is pretty much 24 hours a day, seven days a week, he always feels as though he has to tell me how to drive. He yells oh. at me. He shouts at She's me. He's a terrible driver. He complains driver. about how I drive. Oh, hold on. Oh, I'm Wait, a terrible, terrible driver. He can driver. drive with me all the time. Let me, is let me, that, oh, let I me ask a question. She's a terrible driver, and you don't even have transportation. So how did you find out she was a terrible driver? Because I drive her all the time, and we're almost... He drives in the back seat. He drives. He doesn't I'm, af I'm afraid to drive in the front. She might crash the car. So when she's... But I haven't I'm crashed trying the car. to I'm help her today. by being there. I'm like her eyes. I'm her he's glasses He's not for helping. Her. No, he's not my eyes, and he's not my glasses. He's not anything. All he, all he is is a person that sits in the back seat and criticizes me constantly. Let me ask you and a I'm question. Up. Let me ask you a question. I mean, I'm trying to understand the part you like about him. Because it's really, really cloudy for me. He sits in the back seat, you drive in the front. That's you said right. you drive 24 hours a day, seven days a week. All I'm assuming time. you're not a bus driver. So I'm thinking, just kind of explain to me the, the dynamics of the relationship. What do you like about him? 
Well, I mean, despite everything else and the fights that we get into. Despite the majority of what we've talked about today? Well, I'm just talking in general. We do have a good relationship. And I mean, he has a wonderful personality. He's a very sweet guy. He's very charming, very nice. Mm -hmm. The only problem that I have is the fact that he's constantly criticizing me when I drive. And I can't drive Look. and have him yelling at me at the same time. Okay. I can't do two things at once. Okay, so I wouldn't sir. criticize her if there was well, nothing to criticize about. Her why, driving why, is terrible. But why what are, are you criticizing? criticizing? Why? Are because you she's exactly. driving terrible. She, her driving is just terrible. Okay, That's and what is it? told him if he has a problem, find another means of transportation. Take the bus. <laughs> okay, look. She's got Get a point there. Blades. She's got Angela, a point there. What do you say to that? She's been in four accidents. They were minor accidents. In one year. Okay, Angela, I've had a very unlucky time with driving this year. I mean, I've had some bad luck. So you've had four bad, bad luck. luck, four incidents of well, bad luck. Well, they were very minor. I mean, the last one wasn't even my fault. I mean, it was the yellow light. Okay. Yellow. So the light was red. She was, <laughs> she was trying to change the dial on the radio station. How can she see whether the light was red or yellow? Help me to understand something, Adam. This relationship that you said, both agree that it's supposed to be a great relationship and you guys have a good time together, has a serious snag in that you can't get from point A to point B. Help me to understand how criticizing how she drives will help you in the relationship. Okay, look, the truth is... I'm the trying, truth? I'm now trying. you're going to tell the truth now that we're almost finished? That's, that's usually something you'd start in the beginning, but go ahead. I have been telling... Look, her driving's so bad that I'm, I'm worried about her. And for me not being in the car, I'm afraid that she might get into an accident and get hurt. I'm fine. And There's nothing wrong with me. By me being there and it helping her drive, I think that that would if prevent If they were minor that. incidents, it was nothing to be constantly worrying over. I mean... What do you think about his... What he's saying is that he, he feels that it's necessary that he's by your side as super robo driving man. I'm just worried about it. To make it. I'm sure just you don't get in an accident. How do, you, how do you feel about that? He thinks he's protecting you. I don't think it's any form of protection at all on his part. I think it's just constant criticism. It's condescending and it's irritating and it's just driving me insane. I just can't take it anymore. I mean, there's it, a way of giving, if you want to give, make comp comments about my driving, that's fine. But, no, but no, not in such a I'm negative just, way. Adam. I'm just trying to protect her. Adam, think about it. You're trying to protect her in what? If, she, if you're in the back seat and she's in the front seat and, and there's a dog that runs out in front of her, what are you going to do? Go past her head and grab the steering wheel and jump in there? She's changing and, the, the dial and she's, she's running through red Angela, lights. Angela, that was trying, a very good point that you brought up that actually happened once. I was driving <laughs> and he actually grabbed the wheel while I was turning. She was about to I hit a tree. I was not about she's to about hit a tree. She's about to hit a tree. Well, of course Why she's going to hit the tree. You came in literally from the back and you grabbed Why the steering wheel. What did you expect me to do? Adam, I have a question for you. You know, remember the question, Angela? Tell me, once again, because we're here about relationship. This is not driving court. We're not here for driving record. We're about, it's about the relationship. You hurt her feelings when you do that to her. So, look, so, I don't, no, I don't, not, not look. You look. Tell me a better way that you can tell her that you're trying to protect her. Maybe we could share the driving or this, something. Shh, shh, shh. This is for him. Tell me a better way, Adam, that this you can protect This is the only way that I can think of. By criticizing her? I'm not criticizing. I'm just telling her to pay attention, and she just takes it as criticism. Well, Adam, have you ever seen the movie Crash? No, I haven't. It is the movie you Crash. You might want to rent it. It might be at your store. <laughs> My only suggestion is that maybe we could share the driving. So, I, well, you know, you that know let's, way... think, let's think about what you're saying. Think about what you're saying. You're talking about share the driving with somebody who doesn't have a car. That's not realistic. We could, you're not a male kidding. driver insurance is more expensive than a female. You're On not top kidding, of a bad female driver, well, I, can't afford to, I can't afford to pay insurance. Okay, for that. well then, obviously, you, if that's not. If how, that's do not you, how do you feel, in one word, about him in, as far as respecting you? He does, I mean, aside from the problem with him constantly yelling at me when I'm driving and just shouting these negative. Things at me. I mean, and aside not having from that, a car and not having a good job. Aside from that, he's great. I'll be back with my resolution. Adam, please. You two are obviously what I call unequally yoked. You have to deal from where you are, not from where you think you should be. The fact is, you have what you, by your own admission, just a part-time job. You don't have a car. You are in a situation where you want her to be your girlfriend and you want to have some control. So the only way that you're able to do that is by criticizing. 
it's honorable and noble that you care enough about her to try to provide protection. But you need to have a plan in order to do that. You can't provide protection from the back seat of a car. You being there, no matter how great you think you are, you're not Superman. You can't protect her in the back seat of a car. So that criticism is hurtful to the relationship and it causes a rift because you're coming from two different places. Tracy, your driving record scares me. It does, it scares me. But look at the bright side, you're an adult. Let's hope you get better. The more you drive, in theory, the better you get. I tried several times to get you to tell me what it was that had you, the two of you together because you had this long list of things that meant you shouldn't have been together. And all you could tell me was that you had fun together. You know, when two people don't see eye to eye, the place where they come together is common ground. And since the only common ground the two of you have is fun, then you have to really examine whether or not this should be a casual relationship or whether or not it should be over. The choice is yours. That's that in black and white. Well, there it is. When it comes to relationships, one shouldn't read between the sheets or try to ride for free. All that in a bag of chips from the diva d'amour, Angela Siegel. Join us next time here at Singles Court, the final word for singles.